Did I get it? Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. Hi, good morning, and welcome to the vlog. Let me scoot you back right here. Well, hey, friends. Welcome to my empty bedroom. You guys are currently on my vanity, which I moved around. If you guys saw in my, I guess, most recent vlog, I don't know, I'm all out of sorts because I have to film some clips for that vlog today. That's actually what I'm doing today. I'm doing vlog clips. I'm doing some gaming. Um, it is kind of later in the day. It's almost two o'clock. I did a bunch of computer work this morning already, so I've kind of been doing that, and now I'm going to like start the day with some filming and, you know, fun stuff. Oh, I just realized I didn't do my eyebrows, so let's do eyebrows real quick. I'm just gonna put like a little bit of leftover. This is a boy brow that's like on its last leg, and then here's a new one. So I'm thinking I might just very, very briefly hit it with the new boy brow so that it has a little product and then go in with the boy brow that's kind of dying. And I use the shade Blonde and that definitely helps me kind of lighten my brows because I do have very thick, dark brows. I did mess up my eyebrows because oftentimes when I am anxious, I take it out on my brows and uh, they have definitely paid the price. So I am lucky that now they're starting to kind of return to normal. What have I been up I've been mainly working. I've been working on the room. I watched some movies last night. I watched About Alex, which was phenomenal. I think I started watching it on Netflix like years ago and then never finished and then it got taken off of Netflix and now it's free on Amazon Prime. But it's like my ideal kind of movie. I love like a very nostalgic indie dramedy. I love that. Like that is peak movie night for me. And then I watched another movie and it was not as good. I feel like I shouldn't even say the title of it because it was so awful, like laughably bad. And I wanted to like it so badly. I think what made this film so spectacularly cringeworthy for me is that it really, really felt like a self insert fan fiction that I would have written at age 15. The main character wrote and directed the film and then cast themselves as the lead. And her entire character was very like quirky and I'm not like the other girls. Every single other minor role in this movie is one of my all time like heroes. The main love interest who is an actor that I am a very big fan of. You can just see the light leaving his eyes as he's saying this terrible dialogue. There's a scene where they're on the subway and it literally looks like a middle school musical. Like the set design is so bad. If you have any other like indie darling suggestions for me, I love that. Like Juno is my all time favorite movie. I watched Social Network for the first time ever like a couple weeks ago and it was so good. I understand the hype. I don't know why I had never seen it before. I had just never sat down to watch it, but I would highly recommend watching Social Network. I think it's on Netflix right now. This is really just turning into what have I been watching lately? which honestly, that's fun. Gonna put on some uh, aluminum free deodorant. Okay, last thing about that terrible movie, I promise and then I'll shut up about it, but I don't know if I made this clear. The entire plot of the movie was men just being kind of trash toward their wives being like, oh, they're not hot anymore since they had kids. And then the women being like, oh, you it's okay if you treat me like garbage and then all of the women would like start talking shit about the good looking like the stereotypically hot girl who was there it was a very uh patriarchy tinged comedy and it wasn't satirical it was so objectifying anyway so it, I, I was very disappointed to finally watch this movie that i thought i was going to love and just filled with every single actor i love the craziest thing i've ever watched enough about that let's let's go do some work i do need to shoot some intro clips for vlogs. I have some gaming I need to do. I have more computer work to do. I'm also thinking about maybe ordering some dinner later, so that could be fun. Let's plop on down. Oof, I need water. It is toasty. Okay, I refilmed the whole intro, outro, and I feel infinitely better. A lot less existential dread and a lot more room updates, so. That's the direction I'm trying to go. Anyway, uh, wh what are you doing? No, this is easier with one first step. 
Well, my mom and I were going to break down my clothing rack and take it down, and I just see her out of the corner of my eye, just kind of lift up the whole thing and just walk down the stairs. I'm very helpful. I was listening to a really funny uh, podcast interview. I've been really into Justin Long's podcast, Life is Short with Justin Long. Not sponsored. I love you, Justin Long. And he did a really funny interview with David Harbour right as the pandemic was setting in, and there was a lot of corona jokes that have not aged well. But one of the big things that they talk about is how useless they would be in like a, a zombie apocalypse scenario and I feel that big time because no one cares how well you can analyze Sondheim. No one needs TV history or editing tricks or social media management. Like I would just be straight up zombie food. Speaking of food, I want a snack. So my friend Marissa <laughs> sent over the nicest gift. Um, she sent over like, you know, sprinkles cupcakes. She sent a box of those and the cupcakes were great, but the cookies from this place are unreal. I've been slowly nibbling away at this giant chocolate chip cookie. It is without a doubt the best cookie I've had in my entire life. Look how thick that is, unreal. I also had to grab all of these DVDs that I picked up because I do have a piece of sad news for you guys. My friend Paul. I'm vegan and gluten free. Do they have people teeth? Is moving. He is leaving Los Angeles and he's going back to his home state. And if you guys didn't know like how I originally met Paul, he is my coworker. Paul, I'm over here. Paul, oh. Paul, Paul, you okay. work here. He edits the show that I host four seasons of so it's really tough and sad to see him go so I got him some going away gifts Paul if you're watching right now don't watch this so I was over at Dollar Tree the other day and I picked up these beauties I just chose the movies that had the lowest Rotten Tomatoes score so I picked up Visions which seems to be a horror movie with Isla Fisher Gillian Jacobs and Jim Parsons I grabbed Pottersville and then I also got whatever is Christmas bounty. And there is just truly so much to unpack here. So we're trying to figure out a safe and socially distant way to say goodbye to Paul. He'll be good back home. Anywho, let's play some video games. and we are here. Hi. Oh, that was a good little game in sesh, but I am definitely uh, tired. <laughs> what time is it? It is now 7-Eleven, hey -o. Our love is God, go get a slushie. <laughs> Oh god, okay. If you haven't checked out the gaming channel, go check it out because it is so much fun. I've been having a blast getting to spend some time with you guys over there. That being said, I think I'm gonna order some dinner real quick. I have my order on my notes app because I get nervous sometimes when I'm on the phone that I'm gonna like forget my order and I don't want to keep it. Hi there, I'd like to place an order for pickup. Well, food will be ready in 15 minutes, so I think I might go grab some shoes. I gotta grab my mask, gotta grab my purse. Oh, okay. Hi, it's me, Cat from the future. I feel like Sarah Connor infiltrating a Cyberlife message. Not Cyberlife, Cyberdyne. Cyberlife is Detroit become human. So I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys real quick because I have something really, really exciting to share with you guys. And it's something that I've kind of kept a secret. I gently teased it. That was weird for over on my main channel quite a while ago. I don't think I can mention by name who's involved, but what I can say is that it's going to be a lovely night. And then I only talked about it once on an Instagram story that only a couple of you guys saw. So let's talk about the cabaret games. Basically, it's a virtual singing competition that helps raise money for Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. A couple of theaters in the Chicago area chose a bunch of actor singers to rep their company's Hunger Games style. They go head to head each week singing songs that the audience chose. All of the performers were really cool and mega talented. The host and judge lineup had me screaming. I'm not kidding you when I say I fangirled so hard. When I got the email, I literally thought it was a mistake because there's no way that like I could ever be deemed cool enough to be doing a project with these people. So I actually got to be the host of the very first episode, which was so much fun. I love hosting. I never knew that that would become like a really big passion of mine in the entertainment field, but like here we are. Four and a half seasons of SceneBot Stage Live later. I'm gonna do another take because that did not sound, that sounded like an A alien trying to talk about musicals. I'm Cat Steele and I hope you'll tune in to watch I really enjoy it. It's 
so it was so much fun to go out and do that for the cabaret games. The guest judge of my episode was Sam Polly. She's best known for Evita and Six. I got to introduce the episode coming right after us featuring Laura Osnes and Jessica Voss. What? The entire lineup was absolutely insane. Again, these singers are so mega talented. Also, let's go ahead and give a big round of applause to Holly. She's the mastermind behind the cabaret games. Holly is literally the epitome of Leslie Nope. I have never seen someone work so hard and so tirelessly just to put something nice and wonderful together for people. So that is the cabaret games. All of the episodes are out. They are streaming now. You can find it on Facebook. I believe they also re-uploaded the episodes to YouTube, so I'll link everything in the description box below. If you're able to do so, please consider making a donation to Broadway Cares. So anyway, go watch the cabaret games and enjoy the rest of the vlog. I'm gonna go pick up food, so goodbye. goodbye. I don't know what they're watching. There was like a lot of nudity. I feel very uncomfortable. There we go. We have secured the goods. This is a small local uh, Japanese restaurant. Okay, I just saw a woman on the side of the road, like, dressed for the club, ready to go. Not sure what she's up to, but she was holding a hard hat, like a full regulation, like, construction hat. And then on her head, she was wearing a full-sized, authentic sombrero. And they say suburbia is boring.